Hey everybody, Martin here, and uh, today on the show I'm going to be doing something a little different. Um, a couple of days ago I solicited questions from the um, print members of the Print and Play Hideaway Facebook group, which is the Facebook group that I run. Um, well, first of all, let's um, advance this slide here so that you can get my lower third. So the other uh, kind of thing I'm doing differently is I'm using a little bit of uh, production effects in this video. So we'll see how that works out. So as I was saying earlier, I asked uh, the members of my Facebook group, the Print and Play Hideaway, to ask me some questions. In fact, uh, this is what I posted. I said, hello, uh, dear Hideawayers. My name is Martin. I've been an avid print and play builder and hobbyist for three years, and to date, I have crafted nearly 170 print and play projects, so ask me anything. And uh, they did respond. They did ask me a bunch of questions, and I'm going to be showing the questions in this video, and I'm going to be doing my best to answer them uh, as we go through. And then let's just see how it goes. So, okay, our first question comes from Lou Vesey. Hello, Lou. And Lou asks, what is your favorite block cell color? So uh, there's a little bit of backstory here. Block cells, um, and you can go into your search engine and search for them now, are a, um, were, used to be a um, kind of a kid's uh, simple game programming game um, where you had these colored blocks and um, you could place them in a grid and then you could take a picture of this grid or something and you know upload it through the block cell software and then using that to as the basis to create some type of pixel based game um, I don't think that it works anymore but uh, what I've been doing is I've been finding these block sales games discarded at thrift stores I've found about over 15 15 to 20 of them at this point and it's, it's exciting for a print and play enthusiast like me because each box contains 350 or 400, depending on the box you find. Uh, rare ones have 400 uh, of these high quality plastic cubes in eight different colors. So that's what Lou is referencing here because I every time I find one at the thrift store, I post about it. Um, and I'm basically just, it's a running gag now where I larded over the members of the hideaway because I found another, yet another block sales box and I'm never going to run out of, uh, plastic cubes. So anyway, Lou, to your question, what is my favorite block sales color? I would have to say it is blue. Blue is also my favorite player color. By default, I will be blue whenever I play. So yeah, blue is my favorite block sales color. Thank you for that question. Now we're going to move on to our next question coming from Danny Norbury. Danny asked me, what 3D printer did you buy and why? So something that's been happening and that I've been posting about in the Print and Play Hideaway recently is that I've been experimenting with a 3D printer because about a week ago, I didn't actually buy one, Danny. It was a gift to me uh, by Gabe Barrett. Uh, that the game designer and publisher and the gentleman who runs the board game design lab and just all around cool guy and good guy and he just sent me a 3d printer to thank me uh for kind of like the work that i've been doing on behalf of gaming and the print to play community and all that stuff so that was really really cool a really cool gesture it is a uh let's see if i can pull this up here a mono price select mini v2 printer version 2 printer that you can see here uh so that is my printer it's a small one it's a starter um but uh the nice thing about it is that it didn't require a whole lot of tweaking um to, and and settings changings and you know a leveling of the bed to get it to where i've now um got it to a point where i can i can make um tokens i've been making a bunch of tokens for the for the print and play game fantastic factories um using the 3d printer that's been like kind of like the first test project that i've been working that i've been using it for um and now i've you, you know learned and pretty much um know what i'm doing so that for any other any future print and play projects or any past print and play projects that i want to enhance with 3d prints I know what to do. So anyway, Danny, in answer to the question, I didn't buy it. It was a gift uh, from Gabe Bear, but it's the Monoprice Select Mini Version 2 printer. All right, next question coming from Krastio, uh, my good friend Krastio Dimov Krastev. How many have you played from those? So if you remember the original question, I said that I have built to this point almost 170 
print and play games. So <laughs> Crastio is asking, how many of those have I played? Um, actually, my percentage for playing print and play games is much higher than uh, playing like my non-print and play games. For my non-print and play games, I have about 200 or so right now. I've, I've really pared down the collection. I sold about 100 of them uh, a couple of months ago to a uh, gaming lounge in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, so that was cool. Um, but anyway, so I have about, I have about 200 non-print and play games, or so like just bought re store-bought retail games, um, of which 80 are unplayed. So that's a lot. I have a lot of unplayed um, you know, store-bought games. For my print and play games, I think I only have about 25 or so of the 170 that I haven't yet played. So much lower number um, for, for print and play. So thank you for that question, Krastio. Next question coming from Tin, Tin Vaderik, um, one of our uh, longtime members. He's asking resin versus filament printers for PNP tokens and minis. Uh, so, Tin, thank you for that question. I have I only have a filament printer. I don't have a resin printer, so I don't have experience with resin. But my good friend uh, Janine Viglietti, co-admin of the Print and Play Hideaway, and amazing graphic designer, amazing game designer, Janine has both and has tried both. And her advice is. If you want to make tokens, then you can use either a resin printer or a filament printer. Uh, if you want to make miniatures, you probably want to go with resin. Me personally, I'm not that fond of miniatures. I'm really more about the tokens and the kind of simple meeples and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not really looking for super intricately detailed um, 3D models. So for me right now, uh, filament PLA filament uh, type 3D printer is is sufficient. We'll see in the future if my needs evolve and I might have to look into getting into a resin printer. But for now, PLA filament is fine. Okay, uh, let's move on. Next question coming from Tom Wilson. Uh, Tom's not really a question, uh, more of a request. I still struggle with the fancy card making techniques and would love to see a dumbed down version. Uh, Tom, so um, I empathize with you. Um, you know, uh, it takes quite a bit of practice to get very comfortable, especially with the fancier card making techniques. I'm assuming you refer, you're referring to, you know, uh, the laminated, uh, double sided printed method that I favor currently, or the even fancier kind of uh, cardstock core with, um, say, um, linen paper. Uh, front and back, um, or maybe the core is not cardstock, maybe it's actually laminate, one strip of laminate uh, that you put in there in the middle. That's the Rachel Bruner method, uh, because Rachel was the one who popularized it, and she has a video about, about it on YouTube. Um, if you search YouTube for uh, print and play cards that riffle shuffle, you will find her video tutorial, which is excellent, excellent um on that on that uh procedure that she's kind of pioneered and perfected um i'll see if uh, it's i made my um laminated cards tutorial in 2019 so it's it's a little old and my procedure has changed in certain small respects um in that time so i've long been thinking that i need to update i need to make a newer version of that um kind of print and play cards tutorial the one the laminated cards tutorial um it's just a matter of time you know i'm I've just i've got so many things going on both work wise as well as you know game wise and print and play request wise but when i get to it i will uh post about it in the hideaway and you'll know about it all right next question is from charles isaac uh, charles is asking how do you have time to play all 170 games charles the answer to that question is i do not have time i have very i have pretty much no time for playing any game um, these days uh until i'm that's why i'm looking forward to the holiday break when hopefully i will have time to do at least some gaming but i haven't actually played a game in I don't know, two weeks now so yeah you know just 
you just kind of keep going on and whenever you have you get you have time you 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 play most of the time i don't have time just so many demands on my time and you know i'm sure we are all all of us uh have the same kind of demands on our time next question coming from scott ryan drexler is there a printer that correctly aligns when printing duplex most of the ones i've tested misalign the cards when printing Am I doomed to have to glue two sheets together to get my cards done right? Okay, Scott, uh, this is one of the most frequently asked questions in the hideaway, um, and I've tried to answer it eight ways till Sunday. So the first part of your question, is there a printer that correctly aligns when printing duplex? Uh, the answer is usually no. No home or office printer will align when printing duplex um from the like from the get-go you'll be really lucky to find one that does um and the reason why is very simple um printers were not designed to have pixel perfect alignment of what's printed on the front and the back that's not a job that they're designed to do um when you think about like the number of variables that could go into you know the paper feed system when the pinch roller starts rolling when it actually catches the paper um you know there, there's so many different variables when you're when you introduce like the mechanisms the mechanical stuff into the uh job of printing um and also the environmental um factors come into play the humidity how you know how much humidity how sticky uh are the rims of the paper or the the sheets of paper inside the uh, the the print um uh tray um you know is it hot what is the temperature is it cold all of those things factor into uh whether or not you're going to be getting um alignment for your front and your back uh you know prints on the duplex on the on on the on the sheet of paper right so so hopefully that gives you a little bit of um, perspective on this. It's a very hard problem to solve. And most home office level printers were not designed to solve this problem. They're just designed to give you a nice looking printout, usually on one side of the paper. Or if it's a double-sided print, most print jobs outside of print and play don't really require pixel perfect alignment of the image on the front of the page and the image on the back of the page as long as they're like generally in the center of the page that's really good enough quote unquote right um so that said the second one or the the third part of your question is am i doomed to have to glue two sheets together to get my cards done right the answer is no because me personally after all of my trial and error and experimentation I have gotten it to the point where I can do a manual duplex print on my printer, my HP Office Jet Pro 9018, which I got from Costco for like $199, um, a little over a year ago now. And I get pretty much very, very good to excellent um, duplex printing. I'm not going to say perfect because sometimes there's still small variations and that's just part of it right so it all a lot of it comes down to your own expectations if you expect every single sheet to have 100 percent aligned duplex print front and back then yeah you're gonna have to you know glue uh, cut print on two sheets and then glue them together and it's going to take a lot more time if you're willing to accept um some level, some small level of misalignment on some cards. And also, if you design your cards, your, your layout, as I do nowadays, with some uh, allowance built in, some bleed or some gutter built in to allow for some small level of misalignment, then your cards are going to look aligned, uh, at least well enough, good enough to be able to be played and to not be obvious, right? Um, but you're not going to get, if, if your expectation is I need 100%, you know, alignment on every single card. Yeah. Then you're probably not going to get that. If you're okay with, I want 85 to 95% alignment. Um, and that even better, even like more, uh, uh, alignment that looks less, 
uh, misaligned if because I've designed my template to allow for that, to give uh, some sort of allowance for that, then yeah, um, that's kind of like where my head is at right now. And I'm pretty satisfied with my with my uh, manual duplex printing. So very long-winded answer, very good question, very long-winded answer, but I hope that I've given you a little bit of perspective on that. All right, next question is from Charles Harlock. Follow up on Scott's question. How do you get your printer to properly print double-sided on cardstock? I read somewhere that you got at least close enough with your printer through trial and error, but what trial should I undertake? So Charles, like I said earlier, the key is do not rely on auto duplex. Don't let the printer be the one to handle the printing of the front and back. So what I do is I'll print all the fronts first. So if I if my print and play file, in fact, here's what I, I just did that now for this one. This is a uh, print and play of a game called, um, oh heck, I, I forget what this game is called. Um, it's some type of free print and play civilization game. Um, but I printed the fronts first. The These are the fronts over here. These are the card faces, right? And then all the fronts. So whatever, however many pages this is, eight pages, I printed all the fronts first. And then I flipped them, physical, physically flipped them in the, um, in the tray. And then I printed all the backs, right? And that's what I did. And so now you've got a situation. And if you look at this particular print and play file, um, these card fronts are um, full bleed all the way. But the card backs have some type of um, allowance, you know, white space in between the each card, which means I've cut this from the front and it actually says here, um, card faces use as trim guide, right? So it's actually telling you, this print and play file is actually telling you, cut it from the front because the allowance is on the back. And so they've basically built in that allowance on the print and play file so that if, if there's going to be slight misalignment between front and back, it's not going to be obvious. And then, so your, your cards are going to look good, right? Even if they're not 100% aligned, they'll still look good, which is the key, which is the goal for me, right? This is a really nicely designed print and play file. I've got to, uh, I've got to uh, look into who made this. It wasn't me, but <laughs> um, so I... Uh, game recognizes game. I acknowledge that they did a good job with their print and play file. Um, so yeah, so what are the trials you should undertake? Number one, do manual duplex. So like I said, print all the fronts first, then flip, and then print the backs on the backs of the, on the on the other side of the fronts. Um, number two, teach yourself how to edit a print and play file so that you can add allowance to the backs. It's easier to add. Uh, allowance to the backs because usually most games the backs are all the same across the different cards and so you just have to like do the allowance on one back and then duplicate it and then you're golden if you want to put the allowance on the front there's uh, quite a bit more work that's involved generally because each front on a card is unique for most games right so anyway um those two things those are the two main things manual duplex printing don't ever rely on auto duplex printing and Teach yourself how to edit print and play files so that you can add your own bleed. And then and then the the world is your oyster as far as print and play goes. You can control everything. Thank you for that question, Charles. I hope that that gives you a good answer there. Uh, do I have any more questions? Oh, second question. Charles had, uh, had a follow-up. How thick should the cardstock be for proper cards that can still be punched by the Kadumaro Pro when laminated? Bonus points for metric. So, uh, Charles... Um, I have my, my cards are always 65 pound cardstock, which is 176 GSM. Um, I memorized that just for you. And um, then when laminated, that thickness is uh, quite appropriate to be punched by the Kadumaro Pro or the Kadumaro Neo. Um, so that's that, that's for me, that is a satisfying level of thickness, but not too thick. I used to use, if you go back a couple of years, I used to use 110 pound uh, cardstock, which was 270 GSM thickness, um, and then laminated, which was very, it was already very hard to punch with a Kadumaro Pro. I would have to go and use a, um, this this little doohickey here, the, um, 
the crocodile. What is this one? The the we are memory keepers crocodile, uh, which is a much heavier duty um, corner rounder, and but it also doesn't have as tight of a corner radius. It only has uh, a quarter inch radius and a half inch radius. Um, so I use this generally for thicker boards and like player boards and game boards and whatnot. And I don't generally like to use this for um, for cards. Um, so, but but you know, um, you can if you want to. I know several um, prominent members of the print and play community that are very happy using the uh, crocodile on cards. But anyway, long story to you short answer to your question is. I really wouldn't go much thicker than 176 GSM cardstock. Do I have any more questions here? Emily, I think this is the last question. And I don't think this is a question. I just recently found your video about gutter fold layouts. I had no idea what they were or the pros and cons. Your video was just what I needed. Thanks. Hey, um, you're very welcome, Emily. And thank you for the kind words. Um, you know, so that's not a question, but I think it's a nice positive note to end this video on. Um, once again, this has been, let's see if my lower third comes in, yay, uh, Martin Gonzalez, and I've been spending some time answering your questions um, from the Print and Play Hideaway. So thank you very much for sending your questions in. This is the first of hopefully a series of videos where um, I'm going to be answering questions and um, just trying to um, spread some more knowledge uh, in the print and play hideaway and the members of the print and play community. And one more thing, I know that I did not answer all of the questions because there are some questions there that merit their own video. Um, you know, like some people ask for your top 10 print and play games or, you know, something like this. And so I intentionally uh, didn't answer those types of longer form questions or questions with longer answers in this video. Uh, we will answer them in succeeding videos in this ongoing series. Um, but until next time, this has been Martin. Hey, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content, um, you know, because that is very, very helpful. And that makes that helps me and encourages me to start making more of this type of content. Uh, if you can kind of show your appreciation for it. So please, uh, if you like this, make take a moment to like and subscribe. Um, so yeah, this has been Martin, and we'll see you next time on the channel.